Do you hear me? I'm going to read it one more time so you guys understand that. In general, the law of California declares, and this is in 1872, and it's never been overturned, that everyone is responsible for an injury occasioned to another by his want of ordinary care or skill in the management of his property or person. So how many people here are a person? Raise your hand. How many people have a person? All right. We're learning. See? <laughs> this is what it takes. i, I got to say that the, I, I hang around some people that are so far beyond us here that they don't come to these meetings because they're, they're flying like in the matrix. They're flying everywhere. <laughs> okay, and we're still trying to run to the phone to get out. You know? nah. and it's like a phone to your lawyer. Help me! Help! And he's just flying in and out. He's just having uh, these guys that I, I run around with. They they understand all this stuff. So what I thought I'd do tonight with all this stuff, just so you, so I, I touch on it one more time, is when you look at something, read what the words mean because I did not understand what any of these words realistically meant, and yet I was agreeing to the terms of them. So <clears throat> we get on to verification because it has to be verified after you consent willingly. Okay. Verification. Whenever new matter is introduced on either side, that's the, the defendant or the plaintiff, the plea must conclude with a verification or averment. Anybody heard the terminology negative averment? Verification or averment in order that the other party may have an opportunity of answering it. The usual verification of a plea containing matter of fact is in these words. And this... He is ready to verify. So they say that. Now, how do you verify a negative statement that you can't answer correctly? That's how they ask you questions, so that you can't answer. If I said to Jim, how many times have you been caught cheating on your wife? What's your answer? None. So I say to him, great. So you're really good at cheating on your wife without her finding out. It, it doesn't matter how he answered. If he said one or two, there's no way to answer the question without being in the hot seat. Okay, so when they're verifying stuff, this is how they do it. They trick you. In one instance, however, new matter need not conclude with a verification because the pleader, and it says, and then the pleader may pray judgment without it. For example, when the matter pleaded is merely negative, the reason of it is evident. A negative requires no proof, and it would therefore be impertinent or nugatory for the pleader who pleads a negative matter to declare his readiness to prove it. Okay, so it says practice. The examination of the truth of a writing, the certificate that the writing is true. Okay, so how many times have you ever been to court and the, and the attorney says, um, just for instance, Mr. Faust was uh, pulled over on uh, March 15, 1983, uh, speeding at 162 mile an hour on a motorcycle. When do we ever... It, it, objection. Is he going to take an oath before he starts testifying, anybody ever done that? I have. You have. <laughs> the, the judge says, uh, "Would you raise your right hand?" And the cop looked at me. I looked at the judge, and he's now he's telling. Now he's got to swear that he's telling the truth. Okay. Now, if an attorney is there, can the attorney swear to the facts that he saw that the the highway patrolman wrote the ticket for? He can't. That's secondhand knowledge. That's hearsay. So if the, the attorney won't raise his hand and he starts talking again, you go, Judge, tell him to shut up. He's, he's blabbing and he's causing contempt of court because he is talking about something that he has not first-hand knowledge of. It's all hearsay. So if he's going to testify, he's going to have to sign under penalty of perjury that what he's saying is the absolute truth and he's going to have to bring the proof here today. Not some paper that the highway patrolman said he saw you doing it. Okay? Because we'll get to the highway patrolman a little bit later. Because I'm not participating in the act. And I told him when he pulled me over. I told him his, uh, his costume looks silly. <laughs> All right. Now here's how the plaintiff need not verify the truth of the complaint. The offender only needs to pre be presumed and his own consent will work. Okay, so here's how they get consent. All rise. You stand up. You gain consent. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Y'all sit down. Got consent. You're dead. Doesn't matter what you plead. 
It does not matter what you plead after that point. They never give you a plea of innocent. They give you a plea of guilty, not guilty, or no contest. All three of them are all confrontational. Every one of them. It doesn't matter. At that point, you're already done. If you agree to consent to a plea. Now, I'm not telling you all this so that you can go in and cause more confrontation. i got really good news at the end of this. <laughs> Take off your hat. Um, oh. Because they had to do really good. <laughs> Excuse me. We've got to bleep that out. I didn't mean to use your last name. I don't care. He don't care. He's Superman now. He's flying in and out of the court. <laughs> no, but not hardly. Okay. Well, the judge came in and said, take off your hat. And he said, if you can show me the rule and law and code, it says I have to take off the hat. I'll agree. And I'll be more than happy to take off my hat. I'll be more than happy to take off my hat. And the judge, there isn't one. <laughs> Nowhere. So the judge says, well, I'd like for you to take off the hat. And he goes, what will wh- happen if I don't? And the judge looked down and goes, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that cool? I got to tell you. Now, here's what he was doing. The judge is just trying to get some consent there. That's all he's looking for. Okay? Now, that's one way to blatantly come in and get on the consent game. And I love it. I'm going to start wearing four or five hats. Up. <laughs> okay. So, it's some cool stuff, isn't it? Yeah. What's your name? I'll give you my name upon proof of claim. Do you have a claim here? What's the name on your claim? What's your name, by the way? <laughs> this is my judge. He said, my name's Judge. I'm not going to give his last name because he's really a good guy. He seems to be a good guy. But he says, I'm Judge Brown. And I go, really? Guy, your parents must have been incredible. They named you Judge before you were Judge. Or did they know you were going to be a Judge when you grew up? <laughs> That's your first name, Judge? He's looking at me like... You, you, <laughs> What's your first name? He says, my, my name here in this court is Judge Brown. He's not going to give me his first name. Well, if he doesn't have to give me his first name, do I have to give him mine? No. no. I don't. But he's not looking for my first name. He's looking for three names. I'm first, middle, and last. That's part of a contract. Three all together, remember? Okay. So I'm just giving you stuff that you can start rolling around in your mind. Now, I'm not saying all this stuff so that we can go to court and be confrontational because that is not what this is about. This is about so that you understand what's going on when you get there, before you get there. Okay? And knowing what's going to happen before you get there, some stuff needs to happen three days before or three days within three days of the time you get the ticket. Okay? Now, we get some really good, um, I guess, some really good battles that we have won in the three day rule. Okay? So, if you guys want to get together with somebody here that's uh, part of the assembly, we can point you in the right direction so you can start running this stuff. Now, if you want to play in the Super Bowl and you want to win a, a traffic ticket like that, it makes a lot of sense to start practicing before you get there. Okay? <coughs> One thing before you get to a court is you want to go see how all the players play on it and how good they are. So, if you're really interested in doing some stuff, it's it's a good thing to go down and just see how a judge handles himself in the court. I went down to the biggest pirate ship, I mean the biggest courthouse in Phoenix. <laughs> and we went in there and sat down and we have watched some court cases. And when I go to my little town and I walk into the court now and I just kind of slide into the back, okay, because I've established myself there a little bit. <laughs> I'm not bragging, okay? The first time I went to court there, I almost threw up on the table right there because I was so nervous about what I was saying. But now when I slide in, uh, you can see the judge look over at me and he's, Bill, are, are you on the calendar today? He calls me Bill. Don't you love that? I'm not Mr. Faust anymore. Bill, are, are you on the calendar today? No, I'm just here to say hi and see how everybody's doing and just to observe. Carry on. And he goes, oh, okay. And you can see. When you're on a plantation... You can't talk to the slaves. So you guys have come into a federal free zone here, and we're talking to you like you're not a slave. So when you leave here, if you start acting like a slave, don't start using this stuff, being a slave, because if you're going to try and get in both, it doesn't work. And I, I will tell you that there's a lot of people that are upset about being slaves, but they don't want to move off the plantation. They just want better living conditions. So if you feel that way, that's okay. That's your right, and we, we, we stand behind you in that decision. But if you want to move off the plantation and start your own, just like starting any new business, it gets a little lean at first. Okay? There's no one there to help you. You've got to build your own house. You've got to lay your crops down. You've got to get your own horse. If you don't have a horse, you've got to talk your wife into pulling that plow. <laughs> okay, um, 
One of the sentences in the uh, verification process up here, it says that the sentence was imposed by the United States magistrate judge or by a citizen specifically designated by the judge of the United States. And if you look at that, magistrate judge, judge of the United States are not the same thing. Mm. Okay, so when you show up there, you've got a judge that's actually trying to move you into his country. And he's going to do it via a ship, a vessel. And the vessel has, you know the old warships that had the side railing and it had all the wooden poles coming up there and it had a bar across the top of it. And there's a little gate that opens so that you can climb on the ship. You can come through that gate. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. He's inviting you to come on in and contract with him. He's inviting you to come on over here on my ship. Because if you come on my ship, my law is the law of the high seas. And once you're here, you're in big trouble. There ain't nothing you can do when you're on someone else's ship. So I'm saying all that because they're giving us notice. That bar right there is a very important <coughs> part of consent. If you walk across that without establishing some boundaries or some rules for that judge to operate under, he's not going to operate under. You guys understanding all this stuff? Yep. Okay, if you don't, get together later on tonight and talk to somebody about that. Okay, the word judge here is used in two distinct positions. One is the United States magistrate judge and one is the judge of the United States. It says it right in the U.S. Code. Yes, the judge quietly changes his robe of jurisdiction as he guides you quietly from the statutory law venue into an admiralty law venue. Admiralty law is a whole other animal. But in brief, it can only deal in or with contracts, expressed contracts or implied contracts. Remember when he said they've rescinded all their signatures off of all the contracts and we need to be careful how we deal with those individuals. It didn't say persons, it said individuals. When I read that thing, it started popping out. Did it say U.S. citizens? We need to be careful how we treat these citizens. They said individuals. A person is a corporation. You're acting in the capacity of a corporation. And a corporation always falls underneath some other corporation. It has to. Because if you are a corporation in Arizona, you have an Arizona Corporation Commission number, right? Well, guess who all the states incorporated under? The United no States. So now you're nothing more than an employee. So if you were to walk into Walmart with sandals on and shorts and you were having a drink, a parking lot, maybe a, a refreshment, and you went in there to work and you clocked on and they saw you like that, what would, what would the manager do? He'd say, you're out of here. Two weeks off without pay. Don't ever come in here without safety toe shoes. You can't wear shorts in here. And you definitely can't be drinking in the parking lot for you to come in here. And if you do it again, you have had it. In fact, we're going to go ahead and find you. Two weeks, no pay. Now, what if I am not an employee of Walmart and I'm out in the parking lot and I have a swig? And I walk in with my shorts and sandals and I walk over to the alcohol aisle and I pick up alcohol or I pick up some new swim shorts because these are a little dirty and I walk back up there and they see me. What are they going to say to me? Nothing. Paper or plastic? <laughs> Paper or plastic. The reason is because I'm not an employee. I'm not a citizen of that act. That code doesn't apply to me. With that comes responsibility. Okay? can't be drinking and driving out in the parking lot. I can't be offending my neighbor while I'm in the court. I mean... I'm in the uh, the store, and I need to wait my, my turn in line. I need to be respectful. I need to uphold even the other slaves that are in there. Excuse me, citizens. I need to be respectful to them, because just because they don't know does not mean that they're not equal with me. Top shall be verified in the country in which the sentence was imposed. So the word country. The word country is noticed to us that we are about to leave the republic and enter into a foreign country. It is a key word to their jurisdiction. They must establish a boundary and give notice before we board their vessel and enter a contest to their commercial rules. It is well known that their country is associated with the bar or the British accredited registry or you guessed it, England. It seems that we Americans are still under the rule if they can establish consent and they usually get it every time by voluntary consent. So, this is the way I study. When you look up understand, the word understand, if you split it up and, and turn it backwards, it means to stand under. And that's okay. I stand under God's laws. I stand, I, I stand under God. Okay, He's the Redeemer. He's paid off for all my sins. And all I have to do is consent to the forgiveness. And the word forgiveness weighs really heavy in a court. Okay? When you... When you ask for forgiveness, it's, it's a whole different animal there. So I'm telling you all this stuff because if we learn every word that we say and we start changing our, our phrasing, we can, we can start living. Okay? 
I mean, we can actually live instead of exist in, in fear.